Okay, we're going to go with, and we're going to debate the top CONCACAF uh, players in current form. We're going to go with our top fives. You're going to go first. We're going to throw the graphic right. up on the screen. We're going to walk great. through that. We're going to criticize it. I would love everybody that's watching this right now to criticize Jimmy as well, as well or agree with him if you agree with some of the things that he's saying. I'm not saying to give Jimmy a hard time uh, necessarily, but if you feel like he deserves it, then then do it. But otherwise, I, you know, I, let, can, hear him out first. Let him let him uh, let him let him walk walk the plank a little bit on, can, on his can, decisions. Oh well, yeah, thanks. He thought I get to go first, uh, and and now I can't even set it up. But but uh, producer Des is throwing it up there for me. I just want to have a preface. Uh, of saying that this is just for this window. Mm -hmm. If we're talking current, like the the current of current mm -hmm. forms, this is what I'm going with. I'm going to start with Milan Bor Borhan in goal. Not only is he tremendous as a goalkeeper wearing sweatpants, but uh, I also think he's a tremendous leader. Mm -hmm. I, I think the team responds to him. And for as stout as they are defensively, they still need him to say come up and make a couple big saves. And he did that two consecutive clean sheets so far in this window and uh you know he actually came out with a quote i don't know if you saw this or not but he came out and said the last four or five times we've played the u.s they seem scared to play us mm -hmm. and and that wasn't like that before and that's how much that's like a sign of how things are changing in a positive way for canadian soccer now i am paraphrasing but that is interesting and i like his confidence and i'm actually very excited that mm -hmm. canada is going to qualify for a world cup that's a very big deal now number four i went with tecatito because he didn't start against jamaica but when he came on the game changed and yes they were up a man the game's a little bit easier and jamaica's tired but i think he was one of the main catalysts for as he didn't score but i just thought his energy and his his desire to break the lines and to make something happen ultimately led to their two goals in three minutes to beat jamaica after coming back from one zero down and then in the 0-0 draw against Costa Rica, he started, he came off. It, it maybe wasn't as influential, but uh, when he's on, he, he, he's a very special player, as everybody knows. And, and uh, it's a little unfortunate that uh, they couldn't get more out of that. And then Jonathan David scored against Honduras, a great counterattacking goal, world-class goal. I mean, he took three world-class touches to seal the deal against Honduras. And even though he didn't hit the back of the net against the U.S., it was very clear that we were concerned about him. And obviously, he's doing great things. Uh, for Lille in Liga. And then I have Keeler Navas. I threw, maybe he's a little bit higher than than some people would prefer. But when he's in between the six for Costa Rica, he always gives them a chance. They have two consecutive clean sheets and they beat Panama 1-0. Brian Ruiz, honorable mention here, a 65th minute uh, game winner in that one, which is a valuable three points for them. And then to go to Stadio Azteca and, and get a clean sheet. I think there was 35 total shots Mexico had, something crazy. And... Uh, not that they got too many on goal, but I think his mere presence makes Costa Rica or elevates everybody around him. And, and he's single-handedly, for me, giving them a chance. If Keeler Navas had, had played that whole game against us in Columbus when, when Timothy Wea, if he started, right, Keeler Navas, and then he came out, mm -hmm. or did he not even start that game? Either way, if he had played that game, I think that result would have been much different because the goalkeeper made an error on that second goal that Timothy Tim Wea scored. And I don't think Keeler Navis makes that same air. So his presence obviously is very important. And then I'm going with Kyle Laren. I mean, not only did he he uh, score against us, he also scored two against Mexico in the prior window. And I know that wouldn't be as current in terms of current form. But the guy changes. It's a different different Kyle Laren when he plays for Canada as, he po as opposed to playing for his club. And with these goals that he scored, he broke the scoring record that he shared with Dwayne De Rosario. And I just think he's the hottest player right now. And And what I love is... He's and even with that first goal at the U.S. And remember that Matt Turner save in the second half. Mm -hmm. Kyle Laird was the first to pounce on the shot. Like he was the one that anticipated that this could that Matt Turner might not be able to hold on to it, and he was there first. And thankfully, Matt Turner made another save. Well, not that it mattered. We still lost two zero, but he he just has that belief that I'm going to make something happen today. I'm going to put myself in good positions to make that happen. So that's my top five list. I'm happy to shake up that order. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other players that could be entered into it. But yeah. um, given how lackluster I think the U.S. have been, maybe if Anthony Robinson had had a better game against Canada or if we'd gotten a draw, there might have been an American in there. But uh, overall, yeah. I, I had to leave them off based on yeah. some of the performances I've been seeing elsewhere. And so I'm assuming uh, to answer D Duncan's question, no Davies because he's not in, currently in form because he's not That's currently right. playing with the national team. That's right. Um, and then Tecatito, not really, is a little bit of criticism. Yeah, Alexis Vega. That's fair. That's fair. I thought he was good against Jamaica. That's fine. Um, and uh, and yeah, I think that's overall a pretty solid. Uh, there, there's a couple similarities in there. Uh, and maybe we could just throw up my list and we could compare and contrast at that point uh, if our producer does has it ready to go. Um, 
Yeah, I, I actually Ooh, I like the, it. I like yeah, it. I like it. Eric Eric Davis obviously keeping them in the game, scoring two goals in their last yeah, yeah. Uh, for 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 that's a good shout. I was Panama. trying to decide which Panamanian player I wanted, but they lost <clears throat> yeah. the first game. So it's like Tico's won yeah, and draw. I you just, don't have any Tico's on here, man. Show some respect for Kilo. Yeah, Nava. that's true. I don't have any Tico's on there. Uh, I threw on Henry Martin just because I think he delivers for the team when they need him. Um, and he continues to not get the run of play. He comes in the 60, 70th, 80th minute. They that's continue fair. to go with Funes Mori. Uh, I don't know if he's necessarily the solution as a starter, but he seems to contribute a big time for the national team. It doesn't get the love that I think some of the other players get. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Davis, again, two goals. Um, in yeah, this good choice. Window. Uh, I just think it's really important. They're they're hunting right now. You know, I think Panama are still knocking on the door. Dude, they're one for, point for behind us. They're more than hunting. Into a yeah. World Cup. Um, and, you know, we were, they just, they continue every time you expect, you know, the stereotype of like, do they have the depth? Do they have the ability to go multiple games and can they go through an entire qualifying cycle? Um, they they some, somehow rise to the occasion. I put Yunus Musa in here just because I think he's a bright spot for me, for the national team. I don't think he was bad in the last game. He didn't penetrate the way that he did so far in this camp. But when I see him and I see his confidence on the ball and I see the things that he does, he's just a different type of player. And I don't think we're utilizing him in the best way. And for his age and, and whatnot, he's one of the few sure starters in the national team for me. Every time you're going to put it out, if he's fit and healthy. And I just like the way he plays. Again, take the result against Mexico, uh, against Canada aside. He's just one that I, you know, when I'm building out a match day roster, he might be moving up into my top, top maybe even two of players that I need to play if we're gonna mm -hmm. ever, if we're ever gonna get to the point where we can play through teams and break lines of pressure and be comfortable on the ball and be technical and and all those types of things, and so and then above that, I, I've just got Milan Borion just like you did and Kyle Laren. I mean, watching Milan do the things that pissed me off for ninety minutes, where he's taunting the players, he's getting the crowd wound up, he ran to the corner flag to do a dummy, he's got this gamesmanship stuff that's going on and making the big saves that you know you can tell what it means to him and you can tell how big of a deal this is and you can tell by his comments of you know, uh, repaying Canada for the opportunity to play for the national team and the life that it's given him and all of that, just knowing that he stepped up to the occasion. I still don't consider him one of the best, uh, even maybe even two or three goalkeepers in CONCACAF, but in terms of form right now and what his contributions are, uh, similar to a lot of that back line from Canada, maybe I'm not giving them any, as much respect as I should. I should definitely. But again, on paper I uh, versus the form that they're in, uh, I yeah, put him too. Yeah. And then Kyle Laren just scoring goals. You go back to last year, scoring sure. a ton of goals for the national team, just broke Dan Dwayne De Rosario's record. And all the hype has been around Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, all the things that they're doing in Europe. But um, Kyle Laren has just quietly gone about. When you go back to the last qualifying round that Canada had to go through, uh, Kyle Laren was the top scorer. You add that together over last year, he was the top scorer in CONCACAF and in World Cup qualifying, I think maybe even globally, um, just because of the sheer matches they had to play to get to that point. And so, yeah, just a, just a phenomenal. For sure, for sure. I think I think just to make sure it's clear for everybody listening or watching, we're basically just keeping our current form on this window. So I went with teams that, that didn't lose. I only went with players that had either won both games or won and draw, or I had a draw. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, Weston McKinney's a great shout, Calvin. Because of current form of Juventus, he's yeah. been lights out, and I get it. But but in game he, one, he's yeah, hot, one cold one. He just doesn't play the same when he's when he's the workhorse, blue collar Weston McKinney. We get something different when Weston McKinney so, so, after that game gets a little bit of that what seems like swag and ego, where he kind of passes that whole humility plus work rate. He becomes like starts doing random spin moves all over the place and starts doing things that he didn't do somebody, on the things that made him good. That's at least some, my take. Somebody said to me. And somebody's value or opinion that I value said to me that Weston McKinney hurts our team shape because he, to your, when, when he starts to get a little bit more adventurous, we aren't necessarily as set up to defend a quick counter or a counter that comes our way. And it puts a lot of pressure on Tyler Adams and others to, to, and I wanted your thoughts on that because I hadn't really looked at him that way. I, I felt like, I want him to have the freedom to be himself. So I wasn't as worried about it. And if we no. have a block of four or five, we should be able to handle any counterattack, in my humble yeah. opinion. And, yeah. and, and, but, but Anthony Robinson, a Rob is also someone who is a bit adventurous going forward and maybe takes more risk than he should. We saw it in El Salvador game. Maybe we saw a little less in Canada because the game didn't allow him to bomb forward as much or in the way. Well, that he, he was, it, they were sitting deep. So they yeah, were they already him high in, true, in a high true. and wide situation. They were pin, they were, they were up a little bit higher just as starting points when the ball was there and, and the counterattacks were just a little bit fewer and far between in terms of the exposure or taking risks in the run of play. But yeah, I think the Western thing, I don't think necessarily it's a shape issue with him. I just think it's a mentality thing with him that I think in terms of his high highs and low lows, I would love to see that consistency that, that, that you can get out of him in terms of mm -hmm. not consistency. Cause I do think he's consistent. 
I, it's more of his consistency and his style of play. Of the, who are you as a player? What's the type of player are you? Right. Are you this big flashy guy that you you become when you when you're ultra confident, or are you this blue collar workhorse guy that's technical and he can score late runs in the box and do a lot of this dirty work that makes him very very good connecting the lines? Are you that guy? Because I always see these two different. Weston McKinney's from time to time. And I think it's more that than I like when he, when he roams and drifts and things like that, because you need mm-hmm. him in that spot. And Tyler Adams right. does a great job of covering that ground to put out fires. And Eunice Musa can be a two way player as well. Right. So I'm right. not so worried about the tactics of that. I, I mean, uh, do you agree with that or do you, do you, do you feel differently? No, no, no. We're on the same page. I, 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 again, I mean, I, we, I think we're saying the same things and maybe a little bit of a different way, but I like when Weston McKinney has that freedom, but there are moments where you wish that maybe, and I guess this comes with a little bit of age, right? You pick your spots of knowing when to go forward and when to stay and, and kind of mm-hmm. getting an understanding of a rhythm and the flow of the game, which I feel like we've been seeing to great effect recently with, with Juventus. It feels like he's really settled in. And in some ways we could argue that's why they thought that Bentaker was, uh, you know, he, they could send him on his way. Now that I know they got Dennis Zakaria in for Munch Gladbach in this transfer window, but, but I think McKenney's done well enough for Maxi Allegri where, Hey, we can, maybe release a Kulisevsky and a Bentaker who, where I think he could play both spots, Weston McKinney, because we have what, what, what Weston has been playing well for us. So I love that for, for him in particular, but you know, sometimes the roles will change with the U S because, because sometimes we will need him to sit back and absorb. Like if we're playing a France or say we draw France in the world cup or whatever, that adventurousness is going to have to be tamped down. And we, we have to be able to be comfortable in moving in different team shapes to make that happen. Mm-hmm. We're going to face we're going to face one of the big countries in our group for sure. And and uh you know sometimes our luck we we get groups of death. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Yeah. But well, um well Mario Altador says McKinney dominated yesterday, almost scored and and Boyan made a fantastic save. Yeah, he did make a fantastic save and I think it was a good attempt by by uh Weston McKinney, but I see this is where I, I think when people watch it from a 30,000 foot view, you see the things that he's doing that I find unnecessary at times that he doesn't do when he's in this whole grind mode. Right? Like I said, the spin moves, the extra touches, rolling over mm-hmm. the ball, trying to draw players in, play a little bit more, so to speak, uh, creative minded that I don't always think has a ton of substance. Are you saying, I, I'm trying to remember where he did that. Was that more like in, in a third of the field that he shouldn't? Because it's I don't like mind him doing it. I don't it's mind like, him doing it. It's, you know, obviously in the attacking third, you kind of want to. I don't mind well, that, it's, but, it's, but if it's, it's in the middle it's more third... of like when he's putting his foot on top of the ball yeah, to yeah, like put yeah. his foot on the ball to draw players in, it's just a little bit more of this. It lacks substance to me because when I see him at his mm. best, he's moving at a quick, quick pace. He's changing the point of attack. Yeah, he's getting making his the decisions quickly, doing, He's right? making his decisions yeah. quickly. Yeah. He's not like this is, I equate this to when Pogba plays fast or when Pogba plays slow, right? Pogba foot on the ball, not my favorite player. Pogba, when he's motivated and moving forward amazing. and connecting the game, amazing, unbelievable, world-class, yeah. right? Um, so uh, here's another one saying uh, Jackson Roberts says we're hyping up Borjan too much based on recency bias. That's the whole point. That's current form. That is recency bias. But, um, it, for this, but if it's, it's for this window, it's fair. But novice is still better. I agree. I, well, I, if I you looked at my list, I had novice second yeah. <laughs> and Borjan fifth. So well, maybe Jackson just came on. But I just think when a player rises to the occasion like that in a national team game against the U.S., who are supposed to be the best in CONCACAF and have proven that against Mexico, our opponent to be the king of CONCACAF, and rises to that occasion to show that Canada are in first place and continue to be in first place and are the best team in CONCACAF right now. I think that's just worth worth mentioning to step up and like, again, be that motivating factor so much so that I was emotionally distraught the things that he was doing because it felt like he was taunting me for the entire game, all the stuff that, that uh, Borean <laughs> was doing. <laughs> <laughs> 